back. Well, today I am joined by TJ Prendergast, who is here on behalf of South Orange County Community College District. Well, TJ, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So we were just kind of talking off camera, trying to understand whether things are going to go back to normal at many of the colleges. And, and well, we're hopeful that they will sort of get back to normal. It sounds like you're kind of on your way. Is that what we're experiencing? Yeah, the uh, presidents of both college in conjunction with the chancellor are working toward trying to uh, get things back to reopen the in-person classes while at the same time maintaining safe guidelines and proper protocols for both uh, the students and staff uh, well-being. Yeah, that, that's good to know. And I, and I know that it's been a, a troublesome uh, last several months, but nonetheless, it looks like we're kind of headed in the right direction. Something interesting now, you know, many, many schools have kind of gone through their commencement uh, modifications. I like this one is car commencements. I love yes. it. Tell me about that. Those were a lot of fun. I mean, in the sense that, you know, we were able to see the students and the students were able to see us. Uh, we, we received a lot of positive feedback about how it almost made it more personable because each student got a little bit more time to get recognized as they went through the whole line because there were, there were uh, staff members all along the, the route, but uh, it, did, it did really give them a way to, to celebrate in, in a more personal way. Yeah, I love that. And you know, it's interesting because you're you're right. When you sit into a in a big arena and, and you just have your one little, you know, statement and you're sitting there waiting for, for everybody else. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is gonna be a new trend. <laughs> I, I I don't know if that's a good or a bad, but we'll see. But yeah, yes, it, it was it was quite enjoyable to sit to go through both of them. And they also did the virtual one for anyone who couldn't make it. Right. Uh, and and so that was nice as well. But the but the idea of being able to celebrate them in that way, you know, it's funny, they, they say that you, you know, when you think back to your graduation, all you remember was it was on a football field. It wasn't, it wasn't all that special in, in, a, in a many ways, but I think these students are gonna remember their commencement for a long, long time. Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm glad that you were able to honor them in, in a very special way. Now, looking towards fall, uh, you are going to be reopening. So tell me a little bit about how it might have changed since they've been back the, you know, prior to COVID. Well, certainly there's, there's still going to be online offerings, and, but more in line with the way things were before COVID. We, we already had online classes available. Mm -hmm. I think there will be more of them mm -hmm. than there were before, but, uh, you know, from emeritus to certificates to transfer students, they'll all be able to start transitioning toward a more traditional college experience. And, and I think that's all very important. The, the, with the vaccinations, it certainly has changed. The CDC guidelines that came out, the state guidelines, those are all things that our presidents and chancellor are considering and making their decisions. Okay. They're, they're not wanting to put anybody at risk, but at the same time, uh, move toward that, that reopening with in-person classes. Mm -hmm. uh, vaccinations are strongly recommended. Um, so, you know, ultimately, while it's still in its uh, approval stages, you know, once it moves past the emergency approval, there will be discussions. Don't know where those discussions will go, but there will be discussions on whether or not vaccines uh, for COVID become on the same list, equivalent to, you know, a TB test and a, you know, the mumps music. We don't know. We don't know whether right. that's going to become a mandated thing or not. Right. There are certain groups that obviously want that to happen. And there are certain groups that obviously don't want that to happen. So we'll We'll have to weigh all that when the time comes. But at this point in time, they're not mandated. They're just strongly recommended. So when we talk about the reopening and, you know, many, many organizations, not, not just yourself, are saying, okay, well, you know, you're kind of on your, um, you know, honor system. 
if you will. So are you going to ask that no matter what the situation is, you're going to have masks or are you going to go on the honor system? Um, well, at this point, we're not going to require masks outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, when, when they, if they are indoors, it's, it's reasonable to say, okay, if, if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask, but it's still maybe a better way to, to make sure, uh, cause you don't know who in the class is vaccinated and who isn't. And, and you can't necessarily guess who's, who's wearing a mask cause they aren't or are and vice versa. Are they not wearing a mask because they are or they aren't? So uh, the easiest thing to do is to try and make it consistent. Right, right. Yes, challenges for everyone, I'm sure. So let's go back to your vaccination efforts. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about some of the things you guys have been doing on campus. So uh, back in April and uh, May, there were um, there were vaccination opportunities at the campuses. We were fortunate enough to be called upon by the county and, and other agencies to take part in helping distribute vaccines. So some of the trustees were able to do that. Mm -hmm. I myself, unfortunately, was not because I was still teaching, uh, but, but uh, they were able to come and help administer the Moderna vaccines uh, on the campuses at the Student Health Center. So, uh, that was kind of our institutions, our district's effort to take part in promoting the vaccines. They're still being offered uh, by appointments uh, in June at the wellness center. So, um, and they're, they're going to continue to try and promote that, not only to students and staff, but, you know, the, the idea is that the general public would need to all kind of be in, in tune with that as well. So we have incentives for getting vaccinated. Okay. Uh, they're doing a weekly drawing from June 28th to August 30th um, with the Get Vax uh, program. Mm -hmm. I get the Vax, sorry. Uh, prizes awarded to winning students will provide proof of COVID vaccine the preceding week. Um, they include AirPods, iPads, bookstore credit, up to $300 values. Um, so the students will have an opportunity to uh, be in, in that with just proof of vaccination, whether they get it at the facilities on campus or not, they just have to show the proof. Okay, all right, awesome. And then uh, this is interesting. So Salabat College was awarded a, a very nice grant. Yes, yes. So, you know, $103,000 grant is a, is a good, good promotion to help uh, a very, very needed program in our area with real estate market going the way it is, uh, still trending upward, mm -hmm. houses being built almost everywhere you look. Yeah. Uh, so getting a real, a real estate education center grant uh, at the statewide level is, is very, very much a positive recognition of the work being done already and to help continue that work. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, you're right. Real estate is such a crazy time right now. And uh, any help, I think, would be welcome, welcome to anyone to try and understand what is going on and how you can actually, you know, participate. So that's awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys are, you know, well on your way to getting back to somewhat of a normalcy. And you're also still providing all of the great things that you have over time. So that's great. Now, in terms of you know, maybe fundraising or that kind of thing. Are you still actively doing that? So certainly the foundations at both institutions uh, are, you know, trying to get back to their normal fundraising efforts. They typically have a gala every year. The last couple of years, those have been virtual. Uh, so they are moving toward having those, those fundraising galas in person again. And that will be exciting. Um, they still manage to get a lot of uh, good and good uh, return on their on their efforts. As mm -hmm. far as that fundraising for scholarships were, they were still able to give out a significant number of scholarships as they have every year. Mm -hmm. So um, while it hasn't been perfect, it's been uh, it's been a, a good thing to some sense. Great. Well, that's awesome. Well, I really appreciate the information. Thank you for the time. Thank you for having me.
You're welcome. And we'll be right back after this. <laughs> 